Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracy's The Populist Dialogues. My name is David Doak. I'm host of this series of half-hour weekly cable access programs brought to you here from the studios of Portland Community Media in Portland. Today, our guest is Lori King. Lori is the chair of the Economic Crisis Committee of Portland Jobs with Justice. Welcome to the show. Great, great to be here. Good, glad you're here. Yeah. Yeah, so when we were talking about preparing for this show, mm -hmm. you uh, commented uh, that you, that we wanted to talk about the sea that, that we swim in. Yeah. What, what did you mean by that? Well, I'm thinking economically and also politically. Um, so uh, economically, the sea we swim in is, the real sea we swim in is um, not a recovery for working people at all, even though the corporate media is, and, and a lot of political figures are hyping that there is a recovery, but there really isn't, and that's, that's distressing, and it's something that, that as a movement we have to do something about. Um, one just piece of information that came up uh, on Friday, the uh, March jobs report numbers came in on Friday. So just looking at that little snapshot, it was 120,000 jobs were created. So you need 125,000 just to keep up with the new people entering the job market. So we actually were going backwards. We went backwards. Mm -hmm. um, and this is after a few months of modest, very modest increases in jobs, about 200,000 per month. Mm -hmm. Um, but the you know but the big picture and and, and people get really excited oh 200,000 jobs that was great 120,000 jobs that's not good but the big picture is really unemployment is still incredibly high um, and also profits are very high so profits are really high really high mm -hmm. unemployment is high and and wages are down so in the same period um, wages have actually weekly wages have actually declined and, um, and this, this I really thought was interesting. From in the New York Times itself, uh, there was a report that said that um, there is a trend among employees, uh, sorry, among employers, to wring more work from people who are working. Mm -hmm. Ring more work. Mm -hmm. It almost sounds like Karl Marx could have said that. Uh, yes, I mean, uh -huh. so they're wringing more work out of people. Fewer people are working, but productivity is high. Right. People are working harder, and I mean, you know, there's just absolutely no way there can be a, a recovery because, uh, even in, in even in the corporate terms, because 70% of our economy is based on consumer spending. People just don't have the money, mm -hmm. so there's not going to be a, the, the private sector, the capitalists, the corporate sector. They're not going to be investing in new jobs or not creating <coughs> new jobs, knowing that people don't have the money to. Mm -hmm. buy things. So even on their own terms, the private sector, the capitalist class cannot create an, a, a recovery. Right. And that's the sea we're swimming right. in. Right. And, and it appears that we're, s that we're still trying to recover in the old economic ses sense of recovery. Right. Right. So, uh, and, and, and while you note that um, more is being wrung from workers, mm -hmm. uh, M more pay is not going to work. More pay is, is right. actually it's actually declining. It's actually last. declining. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's that's horrendous. And uh, another report came out that <clears throat> I think we both noted um, to each other. Uh, it was a report that was um, uh, summarized in the New York Times that that shows how income inequality is growing. Um, really, really fast, so that um, in this last so-called recovery, if you can call it what we're in a recovery, but in this last year, 93% um, of income gains, 93% went to the top 1%. Quite incredible. Yeah. Just say that again. Say it really loud. Ninety-three percent of income gains went to the top one percent, mm -hmm. and it turns out that thirty-seven percent of the income gains went to the top hundredth of one percent. Okay, All right. that's fifteen thousand really families. Right. Oh, fifteen thousand yeah. families. Right, and yeah. the bottom ninety percent, not ninety-nine, the bottom ninety percent lost money over a hundred dollars mm -hmm. each. 
Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's a, continue, <laughs> that's a continuation lot of, of a trend which has been going yeah. on, that the bottom has been losing. Right. And the bottom also has increasing amounts of, of taxes that they pay. Exactly. Unfortunately, at the same time. Right. So it's, so, and, and the taxes are going for things that they don't necessarily, <clears throat> obviously don't benefit from. Mm -hmm. Right. So if we're going to have, with, with that kind of scenario, if we're going to have an economic recovery, then that means that the very, very wealthy who are getting all of this increased mm -hmm. wealth have to start spending it. Right. But they're probably not going to do that. Yeah, well, they are, I mean, they, you know, in cap, in, I think, in, you know, the way I see it, I'm not an economist, I'm an activist, but still, the way I see it, within capitalist terms, the, the corporate sector is not going to invest because they know that people don't have the, the, the money to, mm -hmm. to buy stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're investing in other countries, right. but mm -hmm. they're not investing in our communities. And when they invest in other countries, there's great in income inequality there as well. Um, but they're not, I don't think it's in their, they don't see it in their immediate interest to be um, creating jobs and you know, building buses right, right. or mm -hmm. you know, any kind of things that we need. They don't see that as in their mm -hmm. interest. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to look to other places to, to make an economy that works for us. Okay. All right. yeah. Yeah. So shall we talk about, yeah. let, let's, let, let's talk about the budget proposals that have come, come from the Democrats, from the Republicans, and also from the, the uh, Congressional Progressive Caucus. Yeah, because that's interesting. Because I, I, I think it, it really reflects uh, various ways of looking at how we make a recovery. That, that is, I think that's, that's true. Um, <clears throat> well, starting with the, the Republican budget, the Ryan budget, mm -hmm. It is, I mean, it is, it's almost too insane to talk about. It uh, refuses to raise taxes on rich people. It refuses to raise taxes on capital gains and dividends. Um, it is, it really lowers revenue tremendously that the government has to, to help make the economy work for people. And then it, in addition, it cuts domestic spending so much, 19% more do, uh, domestic spending cuts than the Obama budget, which itself is not great on domestic spending. So it's really, it, it will severely hurt people. It will devastate Medicare. Ryan and, of course, our great senator, um, Ron senator Wyden, Martin. joined in with him uh, on, a, on a, a, a devastating cut to Medicare that would make Medicare a voucher system and, and basically lower the amount of money that goes into Medicare, yeah. which is a system that works. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think just on the basis of his stance on, on that and making that proposal should be the beginning of a drive to recall him. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. I'm there. <laughs> right. And then we could talk about yeah. his stance on free trade agreements also as right. another reason, but, right. but let's not go there right now. But right. it all fits. But yeah, mm -hmm. right. So, uh, yeah, the Ryan budget is, uh, I mean, just yeah. in terms so, of... So, so what, what you said at the beginning, we said that money, uh, increase uh, of wealth and income is going to the top 1%, top one-tenth of a percent, top one-hundredth of a percent. Uh, and while all of that money is flowing to them, Ryan thinks that we should not increase taxes on them, that in fact we should decrease exactly. taxes on them. Decrease taxes on them. I just want to put them. that in put that, that a that straight contrast. Yeah, okay, that great. whole perspective. And then in order to pay for that generosity to people who recently have the top one hundredth of a percent got an additional four point two million dollars in this recovery. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> okay. so in addition to giving them more, you know, benefit, um, what he ha in order to pay for that is tremendous cuts. So into into Medicare, to Social Security, mm -hmm. to um, to every bit of the discretionary budget, like education, childhood nutrition, all of that slashed mm -hmm. tremendously. Right. Um, so all, all of those programs that benefit, all of those who have decreasing incomes and right. decreasing wealth, right. all get slashed. Right. So even within right. okay. capitalist terms, how are people going to be able to buy stuff? I mean, mm -hmm. not even including the moral outrage and the suffering that this causes. Mm -hmm. How are people going to be able to buy stuff that will enable them to survive, but also enable the economy to keep moving? It's right. just, it's so destructive. Mm -hmm. It's hard to even think of as sane. Right, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. So yeah. Uh, the, the sane Democrats, are, are, are they uh, any more sane than the Republicans? Well, I, the way I look at like Obama's budget, it's like a, um, a Republican budget, but less insane. But mm -hmm. it's still, I mean, it had some good parts. I mean, I, 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 I want to say that it had some parts that 
that I really uh, appreciate, but I don't think they would pass, and that's that he did include in um, his budget the um, um, taxing uh, capital gains at the same rate as taxing mm -hmm. uh, income from work. Right, okay. So that, that's good. So that's There's some putting the maximum a capital gains tax at what is it, twenty five percent instead of fifteen percent, yeah. which is what it currently right. is. Right. So that's good. And there's some other parts that try to be a little bit more fair in terms of taxation. Definitely ending the Bush tax cuts, which is long overdue and could have been passed when there was a Democratic mm -hmm. Congress. Um, but the essence of the budget, even though there's some moves, is still Austerity. I mean, another another good thing is there's a little bit of money for transportation and infrastructure, uh, fifty billion dollars. I think it's fifty billion uh, for infrastructure, but that's a small. I mean, that's still small. Mm -hmm. But the Republicans wouldn't want that. Um, and there's some money for um, uh, building new schools. I think it's six billion. It's less than last year. Six billion. Yeah. That's it. That's it. It's so wow. less than last year, okay. but Republicans wouldn't want that. So the choice there is between something really austere and something insanely austere. <laughs> but it's still too, I mean, Obama's budget, I, I am so disappointed that it's still, it's still too austere. Um, the um, discretionary spending is at the same level as um, Eisenhower's budget. And he, he, really? he said that, yeah, I mean, he said that as if it was something that, would please people that <laughs> that um, it the domestic on who he's talking to. Yeah, the domestic discretionary spending is on the level of um, the years of the Eisenhower budgets, and um, it's actually lower than it was for last year's budget. Mm -hmm. So it's still too much contracting. It's still too much making people mm -hmm. suffer. The amount of money spent on um, energy um, uh, assistance for low-income people to be able to have to pay their energy bills mm -hmm. was cut in half. Wow. Yeah. So that's, I mean, those things are not helpful to the economy and they're also devastating to people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah. So, so mm -hmm. on, the one, on the one side, you know, well, the, the, the wealth and the income flow to the top who right. aren't spending it, at least not domestically, right. or not, and also not on, uh, on economically and socially responsible kind of, of projects. Right. At the other end, uh, the poor and the near poor uh, and those sliding out of the middle class and the middle class all get hit with with uh, with decreasing services exactly um, and less income so all of these <laughs> things which should be increased in order to stimulate the economy exactly. are instead are going the, the reverse right. uh, and will be a damper a on damper. any economic recovery we might we might have right. yeah so it's still way too austere and and then but military spending or the, yeah military spending is, has actually increased according to Jonathan Nichols of the nation um, military spending in the Obama budget has gone up three to five percent so that's it, a peace just, president for you. It's, yeah. So, you know, not to, not to just be like, Obama is bad. That's not the point. The, I think the point is, is that in this election year, there's going to be a lot of um, emphasis on Obama versus the Republican candidate, on the Obama budget versus the Ryan budget. And there are major differences there, but that should not be our main focus. I mean, for progressives and people on the left, I think we have to be thinking much bigger. Mm -hmm. And, and not to let ourselves get pushed into that narrow right. uh -huh. choice. Right, yeah, so yeah. the political system presents a center and a right as the choices exactly. that we have and we need to expand so that we also realize and have a conversation about the alternative left uh, proposals. And the Congressional Progressive Caucus did have a, a proposed budget do you yeah. want to talk about that for a minute? Sure. I mean, they have a budget that really is a big step in the right direction. Um, they, their, their budget um, would, over 10 years, increase um, um, by $2.9 trillion uh, uh, job creation um, efforts, including lots of effort in transportation. And there's openings there for um, the creation with government funding, federal government funding, New Deal style, of the kinds of jobs that we need 
to reverse climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like th there's there's enough money in that budget to an, at least make a good step toward um, the kinds of jobs in public transportation that we need and new initiatives in public transportation that would uh, climate change in mm -hmm. a positive way, mm -hmm. um, as well as um, lots of money for retrofitting and um, weatherization that would really help. Those kinds of jobs at living wages would be so good. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that are open in, in the um, Congressional Progressive Caucus budget because their funds are there. They pay for those kinds of things with big changes in revenue. Um, they um, increase taxes by $4.7 trillion over 10 years over the Obama budget. Hmm. And that's progressive taxation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and so we're talking yeah. about actually doing uh, financial transactions financial tax, transact for instance? That's part of it. Mm -hmm. um, also part of it is you know, a much more um, thoroughgoing closing of loopholes. Uh, to corporations, and Obama, Obama has um, closing some loopholes to corporations, um, but also lowering the corporate income tax. And the Congressional Progressive Caucus does not lower corporate income taxes; it mm -hmm. raises them. So those kind of things help pay for the kinds of jobs that that will make our society better. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> That's what we need to uh -huh. be pushing for. Right. Yeah, so it actually takes that takes that money flow that's going toward the top, right. one percent, tenth of a percent, hundredth right. of a percent, and brings it back down. It redistributes wealth. It redistributes wealth. That's a good thing. Yeah, and it creates institutions to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Yeah. good. Uh, and and how, how does it deal with the military budget? Do you know? Uh, I don't know the actual numbers, but it says expeditiously cut the wars. Mm -hmm. Responsibly and expeditiously cut the wars. I don't know how fast it would be, but I think the intention is mm -hmm. to make that happen really fast. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So yeah. it would really cut the military budget. And I'm yeah. sure there are other ways um, of cutting the military budget. The um, Oh, and this is really interesting. Uh, the um, there's a, a carbon tax as part of it, uh -huh. which is okay. I don't know over what period of time, 897 billion dollar carbon tax. I'm not sure if that's for 10 years or a shorter period, but that's the, a good beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think budgets they usually look at impacts over 10 years. Over periods. 10 years. Right, right. So, I mean, I think we need much more than that, but mm -hmm. I still think that's a good. That's a good. At least it's good to get that out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be really interested to see what kind of details they would have on doing that. On doing that, and, and because uh, obviously, you know, one of the one of the problems with carbon taxes is they actually impact poor people more than they impact wealthy people. Right. But you can't structure them so that uh, so that some of that impact gets redistributed back down to low right, income that would have to and middle income people. So it's really interesting to see how that policy. Um, you actually would, to, would to work play it out, out. right? <clears throat> yeah. So this is really a, a framework, mm -hmm. and that would have to be looked at. Right. So you know, and I and I think that we we really have to look at the fact that that um, we're not going to be able to get an economy that works for working people through the the private sector. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. But, I mean, they are interested in, in wringing more work from each worker. That's not going to allow mm -hmm. workers to yeah, yeah. to buy things. Mm -hmm. So we really have to look at like a creation of a public sector that's democratic, vibrant, owns things, mm -hmm. runs things, where we have democratic say so over how it happens. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Congressional Progressive Caucus is, is, is going in that direction. Okay, yeah. so if if that's what we need to do, and we need to you know enlarge this conversation so that right. people aren't focused just on right. what the political system has to offer, how do we get people to change their focus? That's such a good that question. <laughs> that is a great question, and I and I, you know, the only thing I can think of is being persistent about supporting worker struggles and trying to relate struggles to each other, trying to bring connection. And uh, keeping our eye on the prize that way. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just some examples that, you know, there's a, t a looming teacher strike, or a really very possible teacher strike in East County, you know, where they're they're um, they're uh, 
they're just they're being cut back both monetarily and also in terms of their working conditions. I mean, we should be getting behind that, supporting them, meeting people, building relationships between them and and people from uh, the Hilton workers who are also struggling for a decent contract. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's it's a it's a patient kind of bringing struggles together, and um, introducing people and getting people connected, so that we keep fighting. We keep fighting for um, you know just economic mm -hmm. conditions mm -hmm. on every level and every in every way, and keep building those connections. I mean, I think that's important. Mm -hmm. So just keep bringing that to people's attention. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it, it really is. And, and what part of that changes, it changes the focus from worrying about who actually gets elected right. to what are we doing. Exactly. Right. It's action and has to be so how primary. How do we put pressure? That was one of the things early mm -hmm. on in the Obama administration that mm -hmm. he said is that if you want me to do something, then um, build the movement, right. build the pressure. Right. Uh, and that never really happened. Yeah, though I, I also think he, he, he went above board. I mean, he actually did policies that were quite negative. Uh, yes, um, uh, yes. That, didn't, that he didn't have to do. Yeah, that somebody else yeah. was doing the pressure. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. But, but I do think we have to, uh, to keep building the pressure more. And I think it's happening. I mean, I think if we had this conversation a year ago, it would have been harder because we have under our belt uh, some really great things that happened this year mm -hmm. in terms of um, locally, you know, uh, there's been lots of labor actions, there's been, <clears throat> um, and I think nationally and locally, Occupy has been such, such an amazing game change in terms of how people are thinking about the political reality. I mean, I don't, th I think it'll be easier to get people off the election mania this year, or people, more people will tend to be off that mania mm -hmm. because of Occupy that you know, Occupy is about the inequality and about the unfairness. Yeah, it's the 99 yeah. versus the 1%. Right. They really focused on It's so focused on that. On that. So um, that's, that's been great. And there's mm -hmm. and there have been actions, um, I'm just thinking locally, that have been so good um, that has shown that we're in a different place than last year. Mm -hmm. Like there was that great day, I don't know if you were there, on uh, February 29th. Um, Occupy in Portland was, uh, and around the country was focusing on ALEC. Oh, the okay. Mm -hmm. American Legislative. Yes, Ex uh, I wasn't there, but yes, uh -huh, right. Uh, American Legislative Exchange, Exchange Council. Council. Right. So our, our, our guest next week will be focused specifically on that. On that. So well, we'll that day talk was, more about that. was fabulous because there are a number of um, corporations, of course, in Portland that are part of that, and there were an, a number of um, affinity groups that organized to have actions uh, focusing on different ALEC members. Mm -hmm. So ALEC is. Um, a, a, a group of um, uh, legislators, state legislators, and um, corporations. They actually meet together to craft law. Right. Yeah, to craft proposed legislation, mm -hmm. which gets presented then yeah. into multiple legislatures across the country, and everyone's right. like, "Well, where did this come from?" Right. And it's it's, it's there's this grand conspiracy. This grand conspiracy. Grand conspiracy it really conspiracy truly is. Alec. I know. <laughs> right. So there, you know, Verizon was an example of an Alec corporation, and um, Blue Cross. Mm -hmm. And Wells Fargo. So there were, and, and there were others. So there were different actions at these uh, different places, mm -hmm. and affinity groups organized them and organized with each other to um, form a, a day's plan of how to um, coordinate all of these. Mm -hmm. And it was a pouring wet, pouring rain, wet day. Yet over a thousand people came out, and really? it was really, wow. it was so inspiring. And it just makes me think: those are the kinds of things we have to keep mm -hmm. doing. Yeah. yeah, and I'll just point out, and we'll, like I said, we'll cover this next week mm -hmm. with our with our guest mm -hmm. uh, Scott Moore with our our Oregon. Mm -hmm. But uh, just in the last week, uh, we know that Coca Cola, Pepsi Cola, and oh, yeah, I'm forgetting the third one. Top. But anyway, there's uh, at least three of those corporate sponsors of Alec which have dropped out of that because of the public pressure that's, good. that's been built and the awareness. I mean, that, that's, that's been good. going on for a very, very long time. So that's even great. though that's only three of 
three hundred corporations right. or members, that is still it's, it's uh, a diminishment for, of their it is oh, right their impact right, right yeah so we have four minutes <gasps> four minutes yeah <laughs> tell me uh, tell me what uh, Jobs with Justice is doing in this regard right. so Jobs with Justice is another piece I think of uh, and 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 the kinds of um, actions and uh, uh, that we do and our and the coalition partners do is a big piece of taking attention putting attention in the right place, which I think is, is fighting the corporations and, and fighting against uh, bad budgets and all of that, and, and instead, of, uh, instead of looking just at the electoral narrow choices that we have. So Jobs with Justice has been focused a lot on um, a Portland Rising Project, which actually also, similar to Occupy, um, takes different um, campaigns and, and pulls them together and we pull them together under the banner of good jobs for all mm -hmm. living wage jobs no cuts to the safety net and uh, this um, uh, tax day which is on this uh, the 17th mm -hmm. of April right, Tuesday mm -hmm. there'll be the fifth Portland rising action and we'll be starting at City Hall uh, at four o'clock and we will be um, having a bake sale the laborers are going to be, the laborers union is mm -hmm. going to be um, coordinating a bake sale and at this bake sale we'll be saying, is this the way we should be raising money for our city, needed city workers and, their, and the needed public services mm -hmm. of the city? Because the city budget is going to be cutting um, the, uh, the workforce of the Parks Department and Transportation. Mm -hmm. So we'll be having a good time there, we'll okay. be taking the max um, and also protesting budget cuts at TriMet at the same time, and mm -hmm. we'll be taking the max over to the so post the, office. Yeah, so the max is not only the budget cuts, but the service cuts, service that, cuts. Are, that are the result Absolutely. of the budgets. Absolutely. Right. Uh -huh. So okay. it's job cuts right. and service Which cuts. Which affects everybody. All well, of it's us. not just the workers, in this case, it's, it's everybody. The whole, it's the whole right. community. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be going to the post office where we'll essentially have the same message because there are huge, massive threat and cuts um, of the whole po U.S. Postal Service. Right. And we'll be saying no to that, too. Oh, right, yeah. And so they've been talking about uh, ending Saturday delivery. Right. So, and they've been talking about closing the routing right. uh, stations. And then they've been talking about closing a lot of, well, hundreds. Uh, of rural uh, right. post offices, right. which are the center of those, of many yeah. times of those communities. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Our services. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much, Lori, for being it's here. Great to be here good. again, David. Good. This has been yeah. an excellent conversation. Great. It's always Same good here. to have you. All Thanks. right. Good. So, uh, if we can bring those uh, screens up. Uh, so, if you want to know more about Jobs with Justice, please go to their website, which is www.jwjpdx.org. Uh, future actions that Lori was just talking about. Join Portland Rising on Tax Day, Tuesday, April 17th, rally and bake sale at Portland City Hall from 4 until 5 p.m. Uh, and then go on down to the post office. No taxes need to save America's Postal Service. It's at Portland's main post office, 715 Northwest Hoyt Street from 530 to 630. David Cobb is coming back to Portland. He is the chief spokesperson for Move to Amend, uh, to amend the Constitution to eliminate corporate personhood and make clear that the doctrine of that money is speech is a false doctrine. He will be at the SEIU Union Hall at 6401 Southeast Foster on Monday, April 16th at 7 p.m. Mission of the Alliance for Democracy is to end corporate domination, establish true democracy, create a just society based on a sustainable, equitable economy. Learn more at our website, www.afd-pdx.org. Thanks to our crew, Dave, uh, Dave King, Roger Bates, Janet Morris, and Tom Thomas. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll see you again next week. Bye.